She is a remarkable woman who has made a remarkable recovery. I'm Eleanor Shino. Sophie Masloff joins us after going six bypass heart surgeries. We're going to find out how she's doing, plus how not to gain weight during the holidays, and the latest book from sports writer Jim O'Brien. So don't go away, AgeWise is next. bypass heart surgeries in September and now here she is looking better than ever Sophie Masloff joins us today on AgeWise and Sophie you look great how you doing thank you very much Eleanor I uh, I'm a little tired of course uh, I'm not myself but I will be because I'm fighting every inch of the way Sophie I've known you for a long time and I know when you were in the mayor's office your staff could not keep up with you you travel you've had an extraordinary amount of energy was this a sudden thing? Did, did you feel this coming on? No, I had no indication at all that there was anything wrong. And the only reason I went to a doctor in the first place was because I thought I had a cold. I had no f physical pain or anything. And that's when he discovered that I had a serious problem. But I, I had surgery in September. I came home and I pitched right in. How did your recovery go? Now you were in the hospital how many days? Two weeks. Two weeks. and. What kind of lifestyle changes have you had to make since, since the operation? Well, I, I listen to my doctor explicitly. Everything he tells me to do, I follow through exactly to the letter. When I came home, I, uh, I stayed in the house for about three weeks. Now I go to a rehab program three mornings a week. Now, what is that? That's exercise, isn't and it? Mostly exercise. Well, well, me and the other ladies and men there compare our incisions. Really, is what <laughs> oh, that, that sounds that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh yes. How is your incision, by the way? Is it? Well, I have several, and uh, we won't go into that. <laughs> What about exercise? Uh, doctor says that's really important now. Oh yes, and I follow the instructions. I do all of the all of the whole program just as they want me to do, and I walk a lot, and I do a lot of things. I I, I go to Harrisburg and I go to Washington. I'm so very much interested in democratic politics. Well, we want to talk to you about that in a minute, but I want to get back to some of the lifestyle changes. Uh, your diet? Have you had to change your diet? Well, I have. I have a strict diet. Unfortunately, I don't pay much attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Sophie. But, uh, I know I should, and every once in a while I get a guilt uh, spread, and I'm careful. What advice would you give to others out there who might be flirting with a uh, disaster? Uh, it, are there things, looking back on your life, that you could have done differently that maybe would have ended up with you avoiding this bypass surgery? Well, I never regret anything that I did in the past. That's, that's done. But I do think, and I, that was a mistake I made, I didn't have periodic checkups. I think that's very, very important. And as you get older, these things are there, and you mm -hmm. can't ignore them. You should have them taken care of. Okay, let's talk for a minute about democratic politics. I know that you were very vocal in your support of, uh, of Cyril Wecht. Um, if you were Jim Roddy, and once things settle, what would you do? What would be your number one priority? Well, there's so much that has to be done. I believe that the county has been neglected for the last four years. Mm -hmm. The potential in Allegheny County is better now than it ever was, I believe. And there's so much to be done. The problem, of course, is money. And you've got to build the economy in order to get more tax dollars. And I think that's going to have to be the priority. Well, and, and yet that was one of the, the big campaign promises. We're going to not have more tax dollars. But um, that, that's, that remains to be seen. What changes would you like to see first? Well, basically, I would like to see more industry in Allegheny County. Because mm -hmm. as I said, that's where the tax dollars are going to come from, from industry, from mm -hmm. jobs. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be a priority. Okay, they, they both promised that uh, they were going to um, make sure that older persons' voices were heard, that we would have a place at the table. Do you think this is going to happen? Probably. I think so. I think there will be a place, there always has been a place, if you're interested enough. Most older folks, and I'm guilty of that myself, just sit back and say I'm too old to be bothered. What about Sophie? Are you going to get back and get involved in county politics? Not, not as such. 
I will go where I'm invited and I will give my opinion, which I always do. I meet people on the street every day and I tell them what I think should be done and they follow through. I will be involved as much as I'm asked to be. What about the, uh, I think one of the, the, the big concerns in the city right now is the Forbes and Fifth Corridor and the, the, uh, the demolition that has been planned for 60 businesses. These business owners say, we had no input. What is, what, is, what, is your, what is your take on that? I mean, you had some revitalization in the city on your watch. Yes, when I was there, we did the PPG industry building, the building that's there and now. And you listened to the people that had yes, been there? Yes, we were very, very careful. All of those small merchants in that corridor, there was sort of a U corridor where it was a carpet business and a hardware mm -hmm. business. We dealt with them first before mm -hmm. we said one word about what we had planned. And it seemed to have worked out. Now, I think that's been the problem now. I, don't, I just can't see moving all these small businesses without making some provision for them first, before, before Nordstrom or any of these other companies comes in. I think that's important. But I do believe that that whole Forbes corridor has to be done over. We talked when you visited uh, with us in the spring about the ballparks, but I uh, want to hear it from you again because uh, you were the one that was out there first with the idea that we had to have new stadiums, and, and they laughed, and then look what has happened. How do you feel about that? Well, of course, I, I don't really care. I'm, I'm not sensitive about it. Uh, I just hope they had listened to me because by this time we would have had a great stadium paid for it a third the cost. But that's the way it goes, and uh, I'm not concerned. Okay. Um, Sophie, you are a remarkable woman. Um, we are so privileged and so proud to have you and the leadership that you brought to this city, and we know that you're going to be out there right out in front for a long time to come. Thank you. Good luck and best of health to Thank you. Thank you, Elna. It's been a pleasure Thank being you. here with you today. Ah, coming up next. Sports writer Jim O'Brien with his newest book, Stay With Us, Age Wise, will return in just a moment. Visit WQED's new and improved website for TV and radio listings and info about your favorite PBS programs. You can read articles from Pittsburgh Magazine, plus get the city guide, restaurant listings, and sample recipes from QED cooks. Check out QED's new educational resource center, listen to WQED FM online, or email us. Even kids have their own section. Just log on to www.wqed.org and discover your world in one click. turns out books faster than pancakes at a church supper. He's taken us behind the scenes of Pittsburgh sports history with profiles of some of our greatest local heroes. With me today, J sports writer Jim O'Brien with his latest offering. And Jim, it's amazing, just in time for the holidays. It always happens at this time of year, just when we're struggling to figure out what to buy. Uncle Harry and Cousin Steve and Grandpa, you come out with a new book, hot off the presses. Well, I do have a schedule, and it's one <laughs> book a year, and I like to bring it out in September, October, and of course have it ready for the holiday season. We have Hanukkah and Christmas, and it's a good book for graduations. It's, I think it's a perfect gift. It's made right here in Pittsburgh, and it's like your show today. It's got something for everybody. Hometown Heroes, Profiles in Sports and Spirit, and, and this book, you say that it's the kind of book that you liked to read when you were a kid. Yes, as a student at Taylor Allardyce High School, there was this one particular book. It had a red jacket, sort of like you do today. And I used to pick it up in the Allardyce Library and read about these heroes, and they were Olympic heroes. Uh, Bob Mathias and Dr. Richardson, Babe Didrikson Zaharias. 
And they were all books about people who had overcome adversity or problems in their childhood, and they went on to become heroes. And now I'm writing that kind of book, and uh, I'm very proud of it. It's got uh, heroes from the tri-state area, and I'll, I'll be doing book signings in Ohio, West Virginia, and of course here in Western Pennsylvania. Well, there are nearly 40 men and women profiled in this book in 432 pages, and, and uh, so many of the people are familiar. Now there we see Johnny... It's Johnny Lujak, the kid from Connellsville, and he was an All-American at uh, Notre Dame in football, the Heisman Trophy winner in 1947. Still comes back to Connellsville, and one of the most famous college football players of all time, but seen here as a high school basketball player for the Connellsville Cokers, as they were called in that day. Okay, so this is basically the same style and format of your, of your previous books, but somehow it seems to me that it has a, a broader appeal than, than some of them in the past that, that truly appealed to only the sportsman. This, I know, as a woman, I'm, I'm enjoying this one. Well, I write for women. Women buy my books, so <laughs> I'm getting smarter as I get a little bit older. Oh, now, speaking of women, two great women there. I recognize, of course, uh, on the right, Elsie Hillman, and that's Mary Lou Kahn. Hmm? Mary Louise Kahn. She was great. She was so much fun to deal with. She gave me so many wonderful photographs because in their home in Squirrel Hill, it's like being in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Her late husband, Billy Kahn, was the Pittsburgh kid light heavyweight champion of the world and nearly the heavyweight champion of the world losing a memorable fight in New York City to Joe Lewis and Elsie Hellman was a good friend of the cons and of course a big sports personality here in Pittsburgh yeah, as well. I, as I didn't realize fight. until I was I was walking on Fifth Avenue, Fifth and Craig the other day and I looked up and it said Billy Con Boulevard. Right. When did that happen? That happened a year ago. I was there that day. Mayor Murphy uh, proclaimed it uh, an honor to the real Pittsburgh kid. We have a new one these days from Keys Rocks, Paul Spadafore, who's getting national attention. Right, And he's right. calling himself the Pittsburgh kid. Okay, who do we have there? Well, there he is, Billy Kahn. Oh, that is a the, young Billy Kahn, isn't it? Well, that's whenever he was over at the Pittsburgh Steelers office visiting his good friend Art Rooney. Mm -hmm. Art was a big fan of his, and Billy Kahn was one of the most popular sports heroes from the city of Pittsburgh. Grew up in East Liberty, and a lot of Pittsburghers followed him wherever he fought. Only, only one Billy Kahn, and, and the relationship between he and, and Mary Lou was so extraordinary. Well, there, there he is with uh, Art Rooney. There's another museum, and that's going to be uh, leveled whenever Three River Stadium goes down. But that was the office of Art Rooney, the owner of the Steelers, and a close friend of Billy Kahn. And that photograph in the middle there shows the Kahn-Lewis fight. But in the background, there's material for a book just on that wall. I see a picture of uh, the chief with... Willie Stargell, and I'm sure Terry Bradshaw's back there, and Jack Lambert, and those are the kinds of places I go to get photographs from my books, because all of my books have about 250 photographs in them. Uh, they're well illustrated, they're easy to read, and they're about Danny Marino well, it's a, it's and a fun, It's a fun picture Syria. book. Yes. Yeah, it's a fun picture book. And uh, you have, let's see, I think we had another uh, picture of Tony Dorsett. Didn't he change the pronunciation of his name, or is that my memory? No, it was Dorsett when he was in college and back at Hopewell High School. He's seen Dorset, there yeah. with his mother, Myrtle, and his father, Wes, oh, what a great from picture. Aliquippa. Father worked at Crucible Steel. Tony was just back in Pittsburgh recently for the closing of Pitt Stadium. And he was the Heisman Trophy winner on Pitt's 1976 National Championship team. I was at the Hall of Fame in Canton when he was inducted six years ago. And I remember him standing there on the steps saying, I can, I can, I can. And I remember thinking, I've got to get that in my book because I like to write books that will help you oh. achieve the kinds of things right. Right. that these men and women have, right. have achieved. What powerful inspiration. I can, right. I can, I can. And I think there's one last photo that I want to <laughs> share with our viewers. A uh, young that looks Jim like a young fellow there on the right. Um, you want that to identify? My days at the Miami News as a right, young reporter back in uh, 1960. Uh, 19, what was it, 1968, Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper. Mm -hmm. And he's in the book, Michael Jordan's in the book, Roy Rogers is in the book, uh, Johnny Majors How about Marilyn? Did you ever get to meet Marilyn? Or was that I not met Marilyn Monroe. In fact, I just had my picture taken with a picture of Marilyn Monroe, so <laughs> she's one of my heroes, too. How many hours a day do you write? I write every day, and if it's not for a book, it's letters, and uh, I, I'm a great communicator. I take great pride in being able to express myself, whether it's uh, speaking or writing, 
And I'm very proud of those books. That book that you're holding is my 11th book about the city of Pittsburgh. It's my 14th book altogether. And going back to my days at Alderdice and at Carnegie Library in my hometown of Hazelwood, uh, books have been important to me. And now to publish and write books about my favorite city and about some of my boyhood heroes and some of my contemporary uh, favorites is a real source of pleasure to me. And I'm hoping that many people will view this as a good gift for the holiday season, and I hope they come and see me wherever I'm out at the bookstores to what, sign uh, What next? Well, I'm working on a sequel to this book, and I also have ideas for books about the Steelers and the Pirates, and I'm not afraid of running out of material because Western Pennsylvania is rich in sports history, and uh, don't worry about that, Owner. I'll have a book for you for next holiday I, season. I, I heard you over there uh, talking to Sophie, and I kind of had a feeling that maybe in your next book there would be a little Sophie and, uh, and, Sophie and, and her um, brushes with some of the great sports figures in the city. Well, one thing about me, Owner, and I'm always working, in a way. I mean, that's one of the curses and blessings of being a writer. And I always have my... And being self-employed. Right. I have my antennae out there for stories, and Sophie's a marvelous personality herself. She knows the fabric of the city of Pittsburgh, and she's rubbed shoulders with some of the greats of the game. Okay, there it is. This year's Christmas present, Hanukkah present, Hometown Heroes, Jim O'Brien's 11th book. Thank you so much, Jim. When we come back, haha, -ha, you don't want to miss this. 10 tips on how to not gain any weight during the holidays. Get your pens and pencils handy. Still looking for a great gift idea? How about a nice fresh copy of WQED's Southside program with no pledge breaks? Or maybe North Side Story. You know, all these WQED specials make great stocking stuffers, wonderful presents for friends and relatives who maybe don't live here anymore. Perfect for someone who can't wait for Kennywood to open in the spring. To get any or all of these tapes, all you've got to do is call WQED at 412-622-1307. Your order will be in the mail within 24 hours. And won't it be great to have some Pittsburgh under your tree? They say the average person gains six to seven pounds during the holidays. Well, no wonder there's food everywhere you turn. So we're not doing this segment to help you lose weight. We just want to maintain our weight over the next few weeks. Judy Dodd, who is a nutrition education consultant, is going to give us 10 tips on how not to gain weight during this very tempting time of year. So all we want to do is stay the course. Is it really true, and I just read this last night, is it true that most people gain weight in the winter time? Yes, that's true. And part of it is the comfort foods. Uh, we, we tend to eat heavier and we have a hot, we have a cold day, so we don't mind coming in and having something hearty. We wouldn't eat those same things in the heat of summer. Well, that, that's true. As soon as the weather turns cold, you want to say, oh, I think I, I, I have to make a stew. That's right. I have to have some <laughs> chili. Right. I right. have to have something. You're right. And we have with excuses gravy. for having things that are warm and cozy with whipped cream on top, too. Okay. And not that I need those reasons, but it's so much better when it's cold. We are not using those words, whipped no. cream <laughs> or chocolate or any of that or good stuff. Or we're going to do it in moderation. Let's get right to your 10 tips. Uh -huh. I like the first one, plan ahead. That's true, because most of us know what we should do, but we just don't uh, think about it. And my my idea is get a calendar. Write down when you're going to be going out so that you will plan ahead. Make the calories count. Save them up for that day that you really want to spend them. Also, if you're going to a lavish party and you mm -hmm. know they're going to have all kinds of tempting things mm -hmm. that you don't want to eat, sometimes it's a good idea to have a little cup of soup That's right. or have a few pretzels or something before you leave home so that you don't walk right in and head right for the food a table. A hearty soup. A hearty soup, okay, and that brought a lentil a kind soup. of soup. But okay. something other, but that's still yeah. only 120 calories, Eleanor. I know, when you say 120, <laughs> you see this, I, I love these soups. I know, you eat the whole can. And it says 120 <laughs> for a serving, but I eat the whole can. 
Well, so you blew it, but don't worry about it. At least, it, hopefully, you won't blow it on the hors d'oeuvre table. Okay, uh, I think you almost covered uh, tip number two, tip number which two, is treat, treat it like, like money. money. Yeah, treat treat your food like money. Spend it wisely, and think in terms of is it worth investing? I mean, if I want that whipped cream, mm -hmm. then I better be worth investing in it. Yeah, treat it just like money. And, and don't make that mistake that uh, I, I know a lot of people make. Just, I'm going to a big party tonight. I'm not going to eat anything all day today. That's I'm going to save worse. it all up. That's not what you mean by banking calories. No, I don't. Because what essentially happens, you come into that that whole area hungry, and mm -hmm. you forget everything else. And what you end up doing is eating more than you would have if you've eaten small meals. Okay. The, the next one has to do with um, take declining. something with you. Oh, take okay. something with you. That's the if you can always be sure if you take something with you. Uh, that you want to eat, and that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Like, you like, what, put carrots in your pocket? It doesn't have to be pack. carrot stick. <laughs> uh, no, take the main course. I mean, if I really want to make sure I have something there that I like, and uh, then I take the main course. What's wrong with that? Okay. Um, dance, walk, move. I mean, try to maintain some exercise. Or do I have, oh, do we have, um, Another tip, that, did you have these in order? I have them in order, but okay. that's all right. Go ahead, I'm jumping all well, over the place. Well, that's all right. Uh, the, the next one is share desserts. Oh, that's a good one. That's an easy one. Share desserts. What is that little piece of something on this plate, oh, these are nuts. Judy? I, no, no, this is not a share dessert. Oh, I thought that was this is your another serving tip. Uh, idea no. for a dessert. No, the point here is that, that take along things that you like, mm -hmm. but uh, something like nuts, people don't want to eat them. Eat them singly. One at a time. One at a time, okay. Okay? okay? Share desserts. Share desserts. Another thing is, and this is one you were working on, decline leftovers. Uh, Every hostess wants to send home the stuff they don't want around their oh, sure. house with you. Sure. And you help them. And you take mm -hmm. home stuff that you will then graze on mm -hmm. for the rest of the week because you feel mm -hmm. guilty. My, my children do that to me all the time. Mm -hmm. They'll say, Mother, take the rest of the pie, take the rest of the cake. I don't want it in my house like we need mm -hmm. it in our house. Okay. No, and just decline it. Okay. Uh, what next? Uh, uh, club soda. Uh, you know, it's not the most exciting beverage, but add it to your wine. It makes it last longer. Put a lime or a lemon in it. Mm -hmm. For every other drink, if, if you really enjoy going out and there, you know there's going to be alcoholic beverages, make a, make a habit of taking at least something that's bubbly and sparkly, mm -hmm. tastes good, is cold. The tendency is, Eleanor, you stand there, you're eating all this stuff, and you keep getting thirsty. Mm -hmm. Well, you can add 150 to 200 calories every time you down right. one glass of punch. Right. Right. So go for the club soda. And, and, and also, I don't know that this is one of your tips, but I, I, I suppose just to drink a lot of water during the day. Any kind of water. And that is a good tip. And that's a good tip before you get there. Okay. Drink it, fill up. All right. Next and tip. then you got to the, drink, the dance. Dance is great mm -hmm. exercise. And mm -hmm. a lot of people think of exercise as being painful and ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, dance is great. And mm -hmm. usually you go to holiday parties. There's something going on. So get out on the floor and dance. And the neat thing about it, today's society is women can dance by themselves. I mean, yeah. you don't have to wait for a partner. Right. And, and keep yourself moving. Uh, if you're going Christmas shopping, maybe, you know, park the car three blocks mm -hmm. away or walk around the mall uh, an, an extra mm -hmm. turn or two. Okay. What else? Eat something healthy before you go that fills you up, something high in fiber. It's better to eat an orange than mm -hmm. it is to drink a glass of juice okay. because it takes longer, you've got fiber. Grab some popcorn rather than the pretzels. It takes mm -hmm. longer to eat, and mm -hmm. if you make it the way you and I like to make it, you know, load it up with things that have good flavor, but not a lot of calories, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful way to fill you up before you get there. In case you wonder how Judy and I eat our popcorn, we love Parmesan oh, cheese. Oh, grated cheese, and it's made with parts skim milk, so I don't feel mm. guilty at all. The other thing is, this, this plate, mm -hmm. this is the size plate you should take when you get there. Start okay. with a small plate, and that way it doesn't look so bad when you start putting a All little right. piece on it. And if you are heading for the food table, grab the, some veggies first, right? Exactly. Start with the veggies. Uh, and again, if you're going to have things like nuts, have them, but eat them one at a time. Don't take a handful and crump it down. Right. Okay. And it's okay to have it. And is that it? No, the last number 10 exercise. I'm sorry, we can't get through the holidays with the excuse, I don't have time, I'm too tired. Even if you just go for a walk in the mall, 
Mm -hmm. uh, don't stop and eat until after you're done. You have to rethink your priorities. Exactly. And uh, there's no question, time is, time is very limited at this time of year. But if you can just set aside, even if it's 15 minutes just mm -hmm. for yourself, and, and as you say, go for that walk or take a trip around the mall at a rapid speed. As fast uh, as you can. Right. So <laughs> it is possible not to gain those six or seven pounds it during is. the holidays. As long as you remember the plan ahead and end with the exercise. Judy Dodd, thank you so much. Thank you. That is the number one tip I'm going to remember is plan ahead. <laughs> Prepare yourself for what you're going to eat. I want to thank Judy and of course thanks to our guests Sophie Masloff and Jim O'Brien and of course thanks to you for watching. You won't see HYs again next week because of our pledge drive, but in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments for us, call our viewer hotline at 412-622-1575. That's 412-622-1575. Until next time, I'm Elkin Yoshino. Remember, good years start right here. Be well, everyone. See you soon. Set furnished by Linder & Associates, McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. the works and at a low